Welcome to rebuilding a large old twin cylinder steam engine. This is part 11, fixings, fastenings and the flywheel key. Here I'm painting the flywheel as I seem to do every day. The idea being to get plenty of coats on the cast part of the flywheel to make it look good, but not to do it in one coat and risk the paint crinkling up. And the other reason for not applying massively thick coats is that the coats take ages to dry and the finish will stay soft for a long time and it's easily damaged. So by putting a normal coat of paint on the flywheel each day and wiping off the surplus as you can see here, I will eventually get a good finish. It's time now to look at the fixings. These are some 2BA studs that I made which are going to hold the cylinders onto the upright standards. And if you've been watching this video series from the beginning, you will remember that the cylinders were held onto the upright standards by some simple slotted bolts, one of which was damaged. So I'm going to use studs, it's a much better idea. The studs will locate securely in the standard and then I can just put nuts on from underneath, far easier. This is the way I would normally fit a stud to an engine, by using a pair of lock nuts. First of all I make the studs all to the same length, and then I do a test fit to see how far they actually go down into the cylinder, and once I know, I make a spacer, this is just a piece of hexagon brass bar with a hole drilled through the middle. And by lock nutting a pair of nuts onto the actual stud, it can be securely bolted in place. But I always use Loctite 603 to hold it in place, because it's very annoying when you take a nut off a stud and the whole stud comes out of the casting. Loctite 603 has got many and varied uses in the workshop, and I really do put it to good use. But one word of caution, do not use too much. It will stick anything to anything, and the worst thing about it is that it removes paint. So if you get any on the paintwork on your engine, it will remove it. This engine is a bits and pieces engine, so the cylinders were not originally on these standards, which is apparent when you look at them. You will notice there are many holes drilled all over the place, and some of them go straight through the cylinder flange, they're not threaded. So I'm not going to use these, I'm just going to use the ones that are threaded which gives me five fixing points, which is not brilliant, but it should be fine. There's plenty of surface area for the gasket, so we shouldn't get any leaks here. Fixing these studs is a very repetitive process, so once again I will speed up the video. The routine simply goes, lock tight in the hole, stud with lock nuts on, spacer, tighten studs into hole, then remove the lock nuts and remove the spacer and then you will probably find that the spacer is also stuck to the cylinder but that's easily fixed. Just tap the spacer with a piece of metal and it will give way. Here's the last one thankfully. One cylinder down, one cylinder to go. Once you have all the studs fitted to the first cylinder, try a test fit on the standards. Then at least you will make sure you have the correct cylinder on the correct standard. Then repeat the entire process for the other cylinder. Remove the cylinder, fit the studs, and put the cylinder back on the upright standard, and yes, everything fits fine. There's still some way to go on this engine, but we're getting there, slow but sure. I'll put the cylinder caps on and stand back and have a look at it. It's certainly starting to look much better than it did originally, and things fit together quite well now. Very shortly I will be having a gasket making party because there's quite a lot of gaskets to make for this engine. There are two for each cylinder and then two for the steam chests and two for the steam chest covers. Once the gaskets are made I can then fit the cylinders and I can fit the pistons to the cylinders. And anticipating refitting the steam chests I found all the studs that I'd put on one side and put them in some cellulose thinners to decrease them. Over now to the flywheel. This is a flywheel that I turned up a while back. This flywheel fits the crankshaft okay, the original flywheel was a rattle fit with a very strange key. So I'm now going to make a proper key to key this flywheel to the crankshaft. I'm using my old milling machine for this, it's a really old Taiwanese milling machine I bought years ago. It's not very well made, it's not very fancy, but it does what I want it to do which is mill pieces of metal. Here I'm milling a piece of steel to make the key. 
but the video of course is speeded up by a factor of 10, although the sound is running at normal speed. So now the key is made, I will try it in position, yes of course it fits. And now I'm going to spin the flywheel to see how the crankshaft feels in the main bearings. The crankshaft is very well made, I initially thought that it was machined from the solid, but when I removed all the grime from the crankshaft I could see that it wasn't, it's actually built up, but it's built up, silver soldered and then machined. Unlike the workmanship on many other parts of this engine, I cannot fault this crankshaft. It is really well made and it spins very smoothly in the main bearings. What I'm doing here is cleaning up the key. Not only am I cleaning up the key, but I'm removing the sharp edges. The last thing you need on a steam engine is something that looks like one of the knives in the chariots from the film Ben-Hur to cut your fingers on. So I'm removing all the sharp edges. I still wouldn't recommend poking your finger into this when it's running, but at least it's not quite as sharp as it was. Removing the key is a simple job. Here I'm using a sharp pointed screwdriver just to get behind the key to lever it out. Alternatively, as the key goes all the way through the flywheel, it can be tapped out from behind. And to finish off for the moment, here I am once again painting the front of the flywheel. This is Humbrol number 19, I believe, Humbrol Red. And I'm using quite a lot of it. That's it for now, more to follow soon. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.